Have you ever pondered the common perceptions of the end times, the second coming, and the sense of impending doom that seems to pervade the narrative? That's the question I found myself wrestling with one quiet Sunday afternoon as I sat in a bustling cafe nursing a cup of coffee. You see, I'd been raised in a devout household, taught to fear the wrath of the Lord, the judgment day, the final reckoning. But as I grew older, as I ventured out into the world, I began to question those teachings. I saw people around me, good, kind people, living in fear of an ominous future, making life-altering decisions based on this fear. People putting their animals to sleep, signing over their homes to churches. Some even taking the drastic step of ending their own lives and those of their children to avoid this prophesied disaster. But then I remembered the Lord's words, my words are spirit and they are life. This led me on a journey of discovery where I found millions of people sharing their near-death experiences. They came back with messages of hope, painting a picture of a wonderful future for humanity. Their stories were not of doom and gloom, but of love, compassion, and interconnectedness. It was during this time that I realized the Bible often speaks in correspondences and parables. Even the Apostle Paul talked about these correspondences. The Lord prophesied of a new church, the heavenly New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven. This wasn't a physical structure, but a spiritual mindset, one that each of us could adopt, one mind at a time. The Lord instructed us to take on the mind of Christ and warned his disciples not to believe those who pointed here or there, for the kingdom of God is within us. This was a call to become like the riders on the white horses, following the Lord on his white horse. These riders are not individuals of a specific creed or religion, but those who have been purified, illuminated, and do his works. This understanding brought me back to the words of the Apostle Peter, who said, Faith without works is dead. It is not enough to merely believe, we must also act in accordance with those beliefs. So, let's revisit the original question. What if the common perceptions of the end times and the second coming have been misinterpreted? What if, instead of a doom-laden future, these prophecies were a call to action, a call to love and compassion, a call to become the best version of ourselves? In a world often divided by fear and prejudice, Let's strive to be the riders on the white horses, embodying love, compassion, and the spirit of Christ. Remember, the kingdom of God is within us. We hold the power to shape our future, a future filled with hope and love. In conclusion, the end times and the second coming are not about fear and judgment, but about transformation and love. Instead of living in fear of the future, let's embrace the spirit of love and compassion and work towards building a world that reflects these ideals. After all, as the Lord said, the greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. So next time you find yourself pondering the common perceptions of the end times and the second coming, remember, hope and love are the true messages of these prophecies.